Let's create a junk journal together through the insertion of the signature pages. We're going to go start to finish and all you'll have left to do is decorate. I'm going to ask you to gather some specific discardable items from your kitchen and we are going to create a grungy, leathery looking journal that will impress your family and friends. I've put a lot of time and effort into breaking this process down and making it an easy and affordable craft with the items and tools that you already have at hand. So give me just a minute to introduce my channel and then we'll get started in making this journal. We're going to get started with this box that a 96 count of K-Cups came in. And I buy my K-Cups by bulk and I save these boxes because they happen to be a, a pretty good corrugated piece of cardboard. I'm utilizing my X-Acto knife and I am going to cut these boxes down and get them into a workable configuration that I can actually either take them to my guillotine cutter and cut or cut with my Fiskars cutter. So now I have these down into a reasonable size and I've decided to try it out with my Fiskars. But to determine the size I want to cut, I'm folding over a sheet of copy paper and measuring that to determine the width that I want my book and the height I want it. So these pages are five and a half inches in width and eight and a half inches in height. I want to cut my book at six inches in width and nine inches in height to accommodate that page. The first thing that I want to do is get a straight edge because as you saw, I was cutting this with my Fisker, and I wasn't really paying attention to it being, or with my exacto, I'm sorry, and I wasn't really paying attention to it being specifically straight. So I want to straighten up those edges. So I put it into this Fisker cutting tool, and the blade isn't going all the way through, so I'm going to get it as far as I can, and then I will follow up by either breaking it off or using scissors to cut it off. So I'm cutting the height to 9 inches. And now I have a clean top edge and a clean bottom edge. And I will cut two of these. They will compose the front of the book and the back of the book. So now let's clean up that edge for the width. And I have one little straggling nub on that left edge but we'll go back and get that. We have one straight edge, and let me just clean that little nub off of, off of this side, and now we have two straight edges. So we have a six inch width, a nine inch height. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing for my spine, and my spine will be one and a half inches in width and nine inches in height. So now all three of those pieces have been cut. And this is the layout of those three pieces to create that book. You can see on one side, we still have the Colombian um, great value, that Walmart brand of coffee. And that is the packaging, of course. And if that packaging is loose, that first little thin layer, I will pull that off because we're, we're not going to need that. But if it is adhered tightly, I'm going to leave it because I don't want to risk pulling up some of that cardboard. 
So there we go. And now I want to tape those into place to give me the opportunity to, to work with it. So I'm utilizing first aid tape and, you know, pull it out of your medicine cabinet, just that first aid tape that you utilize to put bandages on. Any tape you have will be fine. This, we're going it, to, it's not going to be the construction tape of the particular product, but it is going to get it into place so we can work with it. So I am just taping the pieces together, essentially. And what I normally like to do is lay the tape down on the edge of one first and then put the other one into place so I make sure that my um, ends are in line. Now that I have it taped together, I'm going to go around all four outside edges with the corner cutter. And that's a half inch corner cut. Now, if you don't have a corner cutter, you can take the lid off of a... Uh, soda bottle, pop bottle, Coke bottle, whatever part of the country you're in, and utilize that to draw around and cut that with your scissors. I am coating this entire book in black gesso. You can use black acrylic paint, black paint of any kind, any base paint color that you would like to use. But if you're looking for it to appear the way that I have finished it, I would recommend something black. Once I have that black paint down and dry, I'm coming back with my mixture of glue and water. I'll put a link up above for that ratio and recipe. And I'm adhering some torn book pages down. And I want those book pages I'm not concerned. I get a little black paint on it because I had black gesso still on my paintbrush when I dipped it into my glue and water. That's okay because we're going to cover this up. So let's just get it laid down and adhered. I'm making sure that the glue and water uh, placement is over the entire cover because I want it all to be uniform. So even though I'm only putting that paper in certain spots, I'm putting that glue and water over the entire thing. Now I'm checking for loose edges. Is there any piece of that book page that I've glued down that is going to come up. And of course, I found one, which I'm going to set aside. I can use it somewhere else. And I just want to make sure that it's the edges are kind of adhered. Everything is adhered. Coming back with some sandpaper just to kind of rough it up a little bit to loosen, to get rid of any loose pieces and make sure that everything is adhered and of course when I took the sandpaper over that last piece some of it did come up so we glued down and firmly secured everything in this step. This is brown paint. Any color of brown will work and I'm spreading it with a hotel key card, one of those loyalty cards, anything that you have that's flat you're not wanting it uh, complete coat. I just want a little bit of that brown in my black background. So I'm creating the background. Now, I told you I was going to ask you to pull things from your kitchen. I've utilized so far the container that your coffee comes in. And now all any tea bag, coffee filter, anything that you have that you have utilized that you would normally discard, let those dry, and let's adhere those at this particular point in time. And I'm just adhering them randomly, no pattern in line, using that glue and water mixture and getting as many down as I can. I'm putting them layer upon layer. 
So I'm putting down, if their layer looks thin, I'm adding additional tea bags or additional coffee filters. Once I have the front the way I want it, I flipped it over, allowed it to dry, flipped it over, and folded all of those edges in to make sure that everything was in place. Now, as you noticed, when I was putting it on the front, I went all, very far away from the outside edges. That was to give me the opportunity to fold that over and cover up the edges of the book. Now that that has completely dried, it dries to this nice, deep, rich, brownish, blackish color. I'm going around the outside edges with some black ink or some black from the stamp pad. And once I have that black all down, I'm coming back with the vintage photo and going around the outside edges once again. And I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. So to protect it, I'm going to put this hard coat, this Mod Podge hard coat down. Now this step is optional, it doesn't have to be done, but if you could put another coat of your glue and water mixture. I just happen to be very fond of this hard coat and I feel, perhaps from the name alone, that it provides me with an extra layer of waterproofing and protection for, for my book. This is what it looks like when you get it on and it dries clear and gives it just a little bit of shine. So that is all dry. And now I have pulled a button and a washer out. And that is going to create my closure. And I have some charms that I want to put on the spine. And I have this book plate. And this book plate is one of the purchased items that if you want this on, on the front, um, I, you can go into my Amazon affiliate link either in the description down below or head over to my website and you'll have a link to my Amazon affiliate shop from my website as well. But this looked great as it came, but I decided to go ahead and add some alcohol ink and that um, mineral, um, in mineral and in black onto both the washer and onto that book plate. Now, there's a lot of other options for decorating the front of that. You can go into the coffee cup prompts and utilize one of the envelope crafts that we have done. Um, tomorrow's would work great for the front of this book. The um, December 17th. I think is the date that that, yes, December 17th is the date that that will come out where, where I utilize some envelopes. And I do have those as a book cover on another book that I have created. Um, also, any, any little bits of ephemera you have around would work, but if you don't have the book plate. But that's kind of what it looks like with, with that mineral in black. And now to get that applied or inserted on the front of the book, we'll get to work on that here in, in just a second. And the button, what I'm utilizing that button for, I'm gluing it down now, but I'm utilizing that button to give me some height so I can wrap some sari silk around that for the closure. And without that height, it's not able to be secured or wrapped around. So I have that button glued down. I'm going to punch the holes where the button has holes. And I will sew that button into place as well as gluing it into place. And that, I think, will create a nice, nice little look having those threads down inside 
that washer or where that washer lays. And then I will glue the washer, which this is how it looks with that mineral in black, into place on top of that. The book plate, I'm in going to do the same thing. I'm not going to glue it into place, but I am going to attach it into place with, with two brads. But first, let's create the title for this book, which I think I am just going to create a little book plate that says journal. I have some coffee stain paper, which I did do a whole batch of coffee stain paper to insert as the signatures inside this book. So let's just pull a sheet of that out and cut it down to the size for this book plate. I'm going to grab my stamps. and pull out the letters for journal. Grabbing some black ink, and we'll just letter by letter stamp out the word journal. And take a look at how that looks when it fits down inside that book plate. But before we insert that book plate, let's get the book finished here. And I want to darken it up a bit. So I'm going over all those little uh, ridges. I want to pick up that black ink. And I'm coating this with a very light hand to ensure that I'm only picking up where there is relief. So you can take a look at how that looks kind of finished up. And now we'll get that journal into place. And I did cut a piece of cardstock to put behind that uh, word journal because it feels a little flimsy or I'm going to cut a piece of cardstock to put behind that word journal because it does feel a little flimsy so, flimsy, so I'm just cutting the exact same size out of a more rigid piece of paper and gluing those two together. And that just prevents it from being poked through or tearing, just giving it that extra bit of strength. I'll stick that down inside the book plate, and I'm going to put a little bit of glue on that book plate to hold that in place. Now, if this was a journal that I was creating to sell or something that I was giving to someone, I wouldn't do that because the recipient may want to change the name of this journal into something different. But since this is for me, we will glue that into place. I have just some upholstery thread that I am going to utilize to secure that button that we talked about before. We're going to do that first. You can use embroidery floss, um, any type of cotton thread that's thicker. I happen to have this upholstery thread in stock, so I am going to use that but I think most people have some of that embroidery floss that they can utilize, or you can skip this step. You don't have to sew that button um, into place. You can just utilize the glue because the glue, I use glitter glue. The glue will hold it. There's all kinds of glues on the market that will certainly hold that securely into place. E6000 would be a great one. Um, there's a... Uh, Barely Glue, I think, is the name of another one that a lot of people use. I just happen to be fond of the glitter glue and use it predominantly. So we have that sewn into place. 
And now I'm trying to decide, do I want my book plate at the top or do I want it at the bottom of the front page? And I've decided that I think the bottom is more appealing to me. And I shall punch my holes there, grab a couple of small brads, and get that secured into place. Now, all of this we are doing before we decorate the inside. So you've noticed that we haven't put any in sheets or anything else. So now I have this piece of sari silk that has been coffee stained and it is going to be utilized for my closure. So I want to secure it into place on the back of the book and I'm trying to determine about how much of it I need and if it's gonna work. So I'm gonna put that into place and I want it to be even, of course, with that closure on the front And I am hitting it with some glue, but I'm going to double secure it by coming back in with some tape. And I'm just using painter's tape here. You can use any type of tape you have on hand. I would just, masking tape would be great. Any type of good strong tape that will hold that into place. And now I've decided about how much I need and I've cut that off. And we now have our closure in place. And I'm opening up the book to make sure that once I get it filled, I have plenty of sorry silk there. And now to adorn that closure, I have this bag of keys that I'm going to pull out. And I'm going to grab one of the older, rustier keys and utilize that to weight, add the weight to my closure so that closure will stay in place. And I'm just tying that with, with a double knot. Tie it and have it into place where there we go, there's a second tie of that knot. And now that closure is done. Finished. Complete. So I'm taking a measurement just to determine how I want to cut my end sheets. And I want them to not be the exact height and width of that inside, but I want them to be slightly less. So I have eight and a half inches by five and a half inches. Eight and a half inches in height and five and a half inches in width that I've decided to cut those in sheets to. So I'll pull out my uh, paper that I want to use. And this is some paper that I had purchased off of uh, Timu that they sent to me and there was no definition of what it was on, on the site when I ordered it and there was no definition that I could read on the site when it came. But it looks to be a handcrafted maybe out of some type of plant sort of paper. So I am going to use that. Um, you can just use your coffee stain paper here or any paper that you have in stock that you would like to use. The coffee stain paper works, works fine. And I am going to put the coffee stain paper down as my um, base layer for this inside front and inside back cover. And then I am putting this handmade paper down on top of it and coating that with a good coat of glue and water because it's very loosely bound and that is why I wanted that in sheet down because when I cut this paper into size it was very apparent that it was not going to cut into a strict five and a half by eight and a half inch size so there you go 
that's what I am doing with the inside of this book. So we're getting, we're getting close to being finished with this thing. Just stick with me, and and uh, you'll have it completely finished by the time we get to the end of this video. One thing I do want to make sure you're aware, I have put the timestamps in the description below. So if you want to fast forward to something that is more of interest to you in the making of this, please, you know, feel free to do that. This is a long video, much longer than I ever do. So I've decided that my corners need some strength. And I have pulled out some of that cardboard that we use for the base and am just cutting off the corners of that cardboard. And I measured about how far I wanted them to go from the edge to the interior and marked that on one, drew my little line across, cut it, and now I'm using that one piece as my template. And I cut eight of them. I only needed four. So I have four extra that I can use on another book. But just, just so you know, I'm cutting too many here. Because I want them for all of the outside corners. So now that I've had them all drawn from that template, as I said before, I cut, I cut eight. And here we go. Now I'm rounding off the edge, so I've stuck that edge into my crocodile corner cutter. If you don't have a corner cutter, edge around one, use it as your template, and illustrate or line around it, draw around the edge of it, and, and you can cut them all. Uh, a great template for a corner rounder is a bottle lid, uh, you know, of a small bottle. So there the four are. I'm inking around the outside edge of them. And gluing those into place. And now to get the signature ready. I, as I said before, and as we decided when we constructed this, we were going to use eight and a half by 11 inch paper and not have to worry about trimming paper. I am making five signatures of five sheets of paper each. So you need 25 sheets of copy paper, coffee stained. And there are the five signatures all folded in half. And now to create a little bit of interest in those signatures, I am pulling out my punches and just punching out circles, punching out squares, punching out whatever I have, inking around the outside edges of it and putting it down in a line on the inside page of each of the five signatures. So we will be decorating five pages like this and I would encourage you to just take a look at what punches you have, pull out some different ones, punch away and then ink around each of the items that you've punched out and it gives a real, I think, look of interest to the inside of the book. See how that looks on that signature? I think, I think it adds a lot. So I'm pulling out whatever I have. I had this square one that I am going to punch some square pieces of paper with, and I will lay those kind of in a diagonal. Would that be considered a diagonal or an offset manner? And putting those on one of my inside sheets, and I'm just going to use whatever I have. So for you, if you only have one or two hole punches, 
don't worry. Use the same one on every page. If you have a couple, use some variation. But either way, it's going to look great. And it is not something that we have to, to own a tremendous amount of punches to create this effect. So there you go. There's a second one done. I'll do the remaining three. And then we will bind all together inside this book. So there are all the signatures put together. I think they're going to work nicely inside the book. And I'll get the rest of those three done and, and let's get them put in. So to... The one thing I want you to notice here, I did not, I must have lost the footage on it or I deleted the footage, but I did put a piece of black uh, binding uh, tape down on the inside of the spine. You can use black duct tape, you can use any type of tape that you have, but you know, just kind of cover up the inside of that spine. You can put fabric there, um, some fabric over the top, anything to strengthen that spine a little bit. What I'm doing now is cutting my template. So I've cut one template to the height of my signature, which is eight and a half inches. And I have made both of them two inches wide. So I've cut an eight and a half inch by two inch and a nine inch by two inch. I'm pulling out my scoreboard, not necessarily a tool you need. I just want to score down the center of it and fold it in half. You can put the two edges together and fold it in half. So there you go. And now I'm going to make a determination of where I want to sew. And I want to line those two up so that eight and a half inch one will be sitting on my spine exactly where I want those pages to fit. So I've made sure there's the same amount from the top as there in for, are, is from the bottom. So the eight and a half inch one would be a quarter inch from the top and a quarter inch from the bottom of the nine inch template. I'm poking the holes through both where I want to sew and I'm going with a three hole signature. And I'm just writing the measurements on this so I can put it in my template file folder and the next time I make a nine inch by six inch book, I already have this step done. So I'm laying that into place for the spine. And I'm gonna work on the outside because I want to punch from the outside in. The reason I want to punch from the outside in my hole is when you take your craft pick or your ice pick or whatever you use to punch holes, it pushes that cardboard through. So the inside will be a little rougher than the outside. That's why I want to go from the outside in. What I'm doing now, I've cut that hole or punched that hole in my template and I am just taking a white gel pen and marking that on the outside of that spine. And I'm marking it with a white gel pen so I can see it. But I also want it to be a pen that I know that I can wipe those marks away. And that gel pen will rest on top of that um, Mod Podge layer that I put on top of this book. And I'll be able to wipe it off. You can see me wipe it off there when I got it where I didn't want it. So I have my first one put into place and I want to just go directly across from it for the second one. And I've decided to mark it this way. So they are lined up. I'm marking right in the center of them and then in the center of the center dot and the edge dot. So now I'm utilizing that sheet to line up all the rest of these holes. And I'm just marking, marking, marking. So we're gonna mark before we poke the hole through 
to make sure we have them all in line. Some of this is by eye, some of it is by measurement, but you can see what I'm doing here and how I am achieving the evenness of my signatures. So now we have everything marked. Let's punch those holes. And we'll get every single hole punched. And I'm just double checking myself each time to make sure it lines up. You can never be too cautious because once you punch the, punch the hole, you have a hole. And there we go. So now the next step is to punch the holes in the paper. So we have everything ready to accept the signatures. Now let's grab that signature template that we created. We'll fit it right there into the center of the signature and make sure that that full it's fold to fold and we'll punch those holes through lay that into place and I'm grabbing this um, upholstery thread in black and I'm measuring it three times the height of the book to make sure that I have plenty to work with. And that's a little too much, honestly, but I like to have a little bit more than I need than to not have enough. Now, when it's good to measure by three every time, is when you're planning on leaving the tail and dangling some charms off the edge of it. But I chose not to do that on this. So we're coming through the first hole. We're gonna go from the inside out on that center hole. So we're starting at the inside of that signature and now we have gone to the top hole and I got the paper a little out of line, so I'm just putting that on piece by piece to make sure I don't punch an extra hole in the paper. And then we'll pull that from the outside in and then go through the inside of that paper to that top or the bottom hole, and then we'll come back through the center. When you get back to the center, you want one thread on either side of that thread down the center of the paper and then just tie yourself a double knot. Now if you want to dangle charms on it, leave those tails and you can tie a charm on the end and then you have a nice little charm dangle. I'm going to cut it off. And there we go. We'll sew one more in. And then we'll decorate the spine and we will be complete with the base construction of this journal. And the next thing to do is decorate. Now, I will tell you that one of the reasons that I decided to create this journal is twofold. One, I want to start doing journal making for Saturdays so that every Saturday I upload some type of journal making video. Sundays is my prompt day. So each Sunday I am utilizing one prompt every month. I'm referring to that as the coffee cup prompts. 
And I was getting a lot of ephemera created with the first four months, and I thought it would be great if I created a journal that I could tuck all of that ephemera down inside, or at least the ephemera that I'm happy with and how it looks in the journal. So that's kind of what prompted this, but from, from the prompt standpoint. But I've, I'll put the playlist of the prompts uh, up above, and if you'd like to check out what, what we're doing over there, please you know, come along f- for the ride. It's, it's been very fun. Um, as I tie off this second journal, it gave me a chance to, to tell you about it. But we're focused on it over in my Facebook group, And the Facebook group is a bunch of creative women that are sharing their pictures. And it's it's been quite an enjoyable journey for me. So now we have two signatures sewn in. We'll get the rest of them in. And you can see they fill up this book pretty nicely. They're all nice and even from top to bottom. And... The little um, decoration that we put on that center of each center page of each signature really looks pretty sharp when you open up that book. And the threads on the spine are nice and straight and neat. And now I'm just taking a baby wipe and going back over where those gel pen was where I marked where I was going to punch the hole and wiping that white off. But look how nice and neat that turns out when you use that templated method to punch those holes first before you sew that signature in. And now just to make sure that we don't have any cardboard showing or any white residue left from that gel pen I'm going back over that with this vintage photo ink. And I would say that this book is looking pretty good, but I do think it needs a little bit of jewelry. So I have coffee stained a bunch of ribbon and fabric. I put that in a remnants of different fabrics. I put it in a coffee bath and let it sit overnight and then squeezed all the coffee out of it and threw it in my dryer and now it's nice and dry. So I'm just picking some of that lace and sari silk and grouping it together. I have an extra little um, washer that I decorated up when we were decorating the washer and the um, book plate for the front. And I am going to thread that lace and sorry silk through a washer. I stuck it back in this jar so I didn't lose it. So let's thread that through. I'm going to grab a little bit of string and tie that off. I'm just grabbing some string off of that fabric and just getting it into place. Now I'm taking a piece of sorry silk and just tying it in a square knot and that will will keep that right in place. And what how I'm going to attach this to the edge of the book is I'm going to pull my upholstery thread out once again. I'm going to punch one hole through the top of that book above the top signature. You can see right there where I'm 
gonna punch it in. I punched the hole in and then I just threaded that on there. So now I have that nice little spine decoration. I added some those charms to that as well. I just put them on a little thumb pen and attached it to the lace. The signatures look nice. They're all decorated up. Our tie works well with that little key. And I think we have completed a pretty nice looking book out of the things that we would normally discard. So I hope you as agree as well. Now, as I have been working on this book, I have been saving all of my discarded pieces, even that sheet that I was working on top of. I'm keeping them in this little container, and I'll stick my book down inside that, and as I work through these coffee cup prompts, we'll pull that book out and uh, add into that book as we go along. But for sticking with me, I know many of you have been asking to see my workspace. So I thought that, you know, this is the longest video I've ever done. So why not just give, go ahead and give you a little look at the inside of my work area. This is the building that my husband built me. As you can see, I chose to leave it with the raw OSB board um, showing. And my reason for that, my husband was going to drywall this and paint it nice and make it, you know, really look good. But I know how sloppy I am and how messy I am with paint and glue and everything else. And when I finish um, wanting this as a craft room, that drywall can come in then and we can put the drywall up and create this as a guest bedroom or whatever we decide we want to use this for in the future. But you can kind of see that's my acoustic wax station there that sits behind me when I'm sitting at my desk. And all of the supplies on that are for encaustic wax. My sewing machine sits in that corner. Through that door is my jewelry fabrication. There's a bunch of stuff sitting on that table. Those are all Christmas gifts that I need to wrap. Over to your right is just uh, storage. Um, I'll just go back around once again. Most of the things that I use the most are here. There's my computer station where I can sit and work on editing my videos. And let's just take a little walk outside and I'll show you a view from my front porch of my little shop here. And on the right, ignore my trash bin, but on the right I have a little station set up where I can echo die um, outside. This is Callie's pasture and her her Spot over in the barn. That's my horse. And you can see I have a string so I can dry my papers. There's my house. And this is the front porch of my little workshop, studio, craft room, whatever you want to call it. Doesn't matter to me, but right there is the chair that I sit in and film and everything there.